One of the things that uh, Dorothy Sayers talks about in her essay, uh, The Six Other Deadly Sins, you know, she, she points out yeah. that a lot, a lot of people, like when, when she's mentioned the seven deadly sins, she said people will say, what are the other six? Yeah, everybody knows what the first one is. Right. And, and so, and so uh, she, she talked about how the fact, because she wrote the essay during the war, World War II, and she talks about the fact that it really forced people to address some of those sins uh, it, because of the circumstances that they were forced into it. So she talks about uh, that the idea, the spendthrift uh, suddenly becomes thrifty uh, in, in straightened circumstances. So people started, for instance, now they encourage you to recycle. People were recycling during World War II. Everything was being recycled because of the necessity. And that gets back to this idea of sumptuary laws, which, which um, are to me very fascinating because for instance, I think it was the second Punic War when the sumptuary laws were introduced because they were so worried about people uh, being uh, too luxurious, right? Yeah. Too, and, and, they, and they would lose that Spartan spirit that enabled them to withstand hardship and I think this country now, like you said, we've had, we've had an incredibly long run. I don't think people realize, people that know history know that the, the, the type of affluence that our civilization has had and the types of luxuria that has seeped in uh, to this uh, civilization. And I think these deadly sins, I mean, it's very interesting that Gregory um, really, uh, his taxonomy comes uh, in the in the aftermath of the collapse of the Romans, with with the uh, with with the sins completely corroding that culture and civilization, and I think in fact um, the the Christians saw greed as as one of the major. They used to write uh, apparently they wrote um, graffiti on the Roman walls R O M A from the Radex Omnium. Uh, you know, the, uh, the greed is the, the, the root of all evil. So they would actually have an anacronym from uh, Timothy's uh, verse about greed. So they, they saw greed as something that had really destroyed uh, the Romans, partly because of, of the incredible greed and, and corruption in the government. So, I mean, our culture right now seems to be, I, I see the, the, the grip of at least three of these deadly sins. I mean, certainly lust uh, has an incredible grip on this civilization, but envy and, uh, and, and greed seem to be, and anger really, I mean, when it gets down to it, all seven are pretty well established in the American ethos right now. I mean, what do you think? I think it means that civilization or our civilization is in serious trouble. Right. Uh, we have lost our moral moorings, our moral foundations. Uh, we sometimes treat vices as if they're virtues, and even treat virtues as if they're vices. And I think we have to get straight about these things. Uh, but it's very hard because once the, once the machine is up and running, people get caught up in that, in that machine, uh, and their values get messed up. We have a transvaluation of values, to, to quote that concept of, of Nietzsche's, that while things like wealth, status, prestige, um, achievement are good things in the sense that they're not bad things, they're not bad in themselves, with wealth you can do many good things. You can use your social standing or social status to do many uh, good things. But they are, while they are not bad things, their value is merely instrumental. Wealth is not a good in itself. Status is not a good in itself. It's what you do with them that makes them good and, and bad. So if those are not the things that are good in themselves, if those are not the things to which we should fundamentally direct ourselves, that we should be most concerned about, then what are those things? The things that aren't merely instrumentally valuable, family, faith, integrity, compassion, looking out for other people, developing a virtuous character, uh, honoring the honorable, 
beginning with God, but everything else then in God's creation that is honorable. Getting students today to get their values straight is important. In theory, they understand that, but they very rarely advert to it because we have all these media of culture. And I don't just mean the news and entertainment media. I mean all the, uh, the, the mechanisms through which uh, a culture communicates to young people what's important are in effect sending the message that what really matters, what you should really be striving for are wealth, status, prestige, celebrity, and so forth. And those things, while again, they're not bad in themselves and can be instrumentally good, also open the door to corruption because it's so easy to fall in love with them. Take the approval of other people, take, take celebrity, things like that. It's very easy to lust for those things, uh, to be greedy about those things to want more than is good for you or good for anybody. And we human beings were very easily addicted to things like applause, things like approval. But if we're addicted, that means that when push comes to shove, and it is our spiritual and moral obligation to stand up against what's wrong, right. even when the entire culture is celebrating what's wrong, Right. We will hold back from doing it. We will be afraid to do it because our addiction to applause, to approval, stops us, prevents us from speaking out, from standing up for what's right, for, for criticizing what's wrong, for playing the prophetic role that all the great monotheistic traditions see as central, not just for great prophets, not yeah. just for you know, Jesus and Moses and Muhammad, but for all of us, that all of us have an obligation to do that. That gets lost.